or if this lecture is on hypoglycemia, remember, hypoglycemia will be the blood glucose uh, less than 70. So if you go and check your patient and it's less than 70, you just enter a little bit of hypoglycemia. Now, when hypoglycemia occurs, your ANS, autonomic nervous system, will be triggered. And two things will be triggered. Number one, glucagon. Number two, epinephrine. Glucagon will stimulate your liver to convert glycogen into glucose. Glucose is what you will use for energy. Okay, so just remember those two things. Glucagon and epinephrine. We'll return to glucagon here in just a little bit. Let's focus on epinephrine for now. Now remember that epinephrine, you produce this during something called the fight or flight response. So if you're taking your exam, taking boards or whatever it is that you're doing, remember your fight or flight response. Remember somebody that gets scared, somebody that was just shocked. What happens? Pallor. Okay. Anxiety. They get scared. Some nervousness. Sweating. Biggie. Palpitations. Hearts racing. Boom, 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 boom. So again, fight or flight. Shakiness. Okay. And hunger. Hunger because your brain is telling you, hey, feed me. I need sugar. So your brain is letting you know uh, I'm starving. I need some glucose because remember, glucose is what, feed, is what feeds the brain. So your body again is telling your body, I'm hungry, feed me right now. Shaking. Your body is actually trying to break down a little bit of muscle, a little bit of that glucose so that your brain can be fed. So this is why you get the shakiness. Okay. Remember all these palpitations, nervousness, sweating, pallor, anxiety. Again, think back to your fight or flight response. Even in your fight or flight response, you want to break down energy. You want to break down fat so you can either fight or you can run away. Hence the fight or flight response. Okay, so remember hypoglycemia, two things will be triggered by your autonomic nervous system, epinephrine and glucagon. Okay, now if hypo hypoglycemia continues to be untreated, what will happen is your brain will slowly uh, kind of shut down. Number one, you'll have difficulty with speaking, visual disturbances, and then as you begin to deteriorate further and further, you run into some confusion. If no treatment is available, coma will be next. And again, if treatment is unavailable, death will occur. Okay, so this is very important. Make sure you watch out that hypoglycemia does not occur. Now, um, we just talked about diabetic ketoacidosis. In diabetic ketoacidosis, maybe you have a um, blood glucose of maybe 320, okay? Now you bring that patient down with IV insulin to maybe, let's say, 220. Now 220 is still high, technically. But if you drop them from 320 to 220 in just a few minutes, you just put them in a hypoglycemic state because you just you tank them. So you have to be careful when you're giving insulin therapy to somebody. They come in through the ER, maybe they're, I don't know, somewhere like this, and then you give them 12, 15, 20 units. You have to be careful that you don't drop them down too quick, okay? Because technically this is still a hypoglycemic state, but you drop them. So the body, the brain will react as if though there is hypoglycemia occurring, okay? Treatment and interventions, one. Now again, let's return back to, you know, a technical state here where it's less than 70, okay? So what you would do for this patient is give them something like 15 to 20 grams of simple sugars. Now, simple sugars is the key. Okay, so something like juice. And then you, they could have other things, but drinks. You definitely don't want to give them like a cheeseburger, fries, anything like that, because it, the digestive system cannot digest it immediately so that patient will go on for longer periods of time without getting any glucose into the bloodstream so you want to keep it simple okay juices are good and what you want to do is you want to recheck your blood glucose
interval within 15 minutes and again within 45 minutes. Now, what's really, really good is to get something like juice, crackers, and maybe even some peanut butter. Okay, the first thing would be juice. And then you recheck that blood glucose. Okay, if it's normal, it comes back up, then you stop at that point. If it's not, then what you need to do is you need to call the physician, call the MD, what do we do? You don't want to wait too long and have that patient go further, even down, even down further. And number two, what you can do is give them one milligram of glutathione IM. And we just talked about this previously when I told you to hold off on the glutathione. Again, you're giving this glutathione because again, glutathione stimulates the liver to convert glycogen to glucose. So pretty much this is gonna go into the bloodstream, feed the old brain. Okay, so one milligram of glutathione I am. Now, if you're giving the one milligram of glutathione, typically they are unable to swallow. So if you give this, watch out because glucagon causes nausea and vomiting. So if they're lying down and you give them this stuff and they start to wake up and all of a sudden they start throwing up, they're in a supine position and they're going to throw up and what can happen? They can aspirate. So therefore you want to put them in a sideline position so if they do go ahead and vomit, they can go ahead and puke to the side. They won't choke on it. The other thing that you don't want to do is put them in a sitting position because if they're unconscious, if they're not awake, what's going to happen? They're going to fall and tip over. Okay, so put them in sideline position in case they do throw up, just go to the side. Questions?